how can a rolling stone communicate more effectively? So if you struggle with avoidance or you have a partner that struggles with avoidance and tends to kind of disappear whenever you want to talk about the relationship, then this video segment is going to be for you. And if you don't know me or this is your first time joining me here, my name is Brianna McWilliam and I am an author, educator, and licensed and board certified creative arts therapist. I've been in the field for about 13 years now and I am just wild about talking about love and attachment in adult relationships. And more specifically, I help individuals struggling with insecure attachment go from feeling fearful and confused to stepping into what I call their self-sovereignty and calling in those soul-shaking, passionate partnerships they want without having to talk in circles around their feelings for hours or even years on end with no tangible result. And I do this using a psycho-spiritual approach to applying creative arts interventions in the framework of attachment theory. And my approach is called the MAC method, and that is mastery, awareness, and creativity, which is a continuous feedback loop between three major steps, and that is cognitive reframing, body activation, and arts-based experientials. So today we're really going to be hanging out in the realms of cognitive reframing as we start to approach this question of how can a rolling stone communicate more effectively. So when people say that they struggle with communication, it's usually that they struggle to communicate what it is they actually mean or they struggle to understand what it is that their partner actually means. And typically this results because we are communicating from a defensive position, or we are communicating with words that mean something very different to each of us, okay? Now, either way, typically we don't want to appear vulnerable and we don't want to appear incapable or incompetent. And so if we struggle to identify, name, and express our feelings accurately, Talking about the relationship and about how you are feeling about the relationship is going to feel like an invitation to go stomping around a minefield, <laughs> okay? And so we disguise our meaning in these kinds of coded messages that we send one another. And usually it is largely an unconscious thing that we're doing. We just don't realize that we are doing it. So really it kind of boils down to an ability to decode what I'm going to call surface structure versus deep structure communications. And these deep structure communications always point towards a core emotional response. So I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say that, and this is gonna be a heteronormative example. So let's say Sally says, you don't care about me. And then John responds, well, of course I care about you. That's my job. Why do you think I'm trying to fix this problem? And so John reasons that because he's preoccupied with solving a problem that in some way benefits Sally, he's demonstrating his love for her. She must know that she cares, that he cares. But Sally perceives this response as a way of him avoiding giving her direct attention and caring. And so her comment inevitably is, inevitably is going to make him feel incompetent. And then she's not going to trust his ability to meet her needs. And so then these deep structured communications are really the essence of what someone is trying to say. So for example, Sally says, I feel like you never listen to me. Well, first of all, that's not really a feeling statement, it's a criticism. Now, most likely she doesn't expect the word never to be taken literally, and what she's trying to express is the frustration that she feels in the moment and perhaps a fear that John is losing interest in her. So a deep structure way of saying this would be, I feel frustrated and hurt and I'm worried that you're losing interest in me. Now, that's not bad but it could be improved. And I would recommend pre-framing your statement and including a repair option with your deep structure communication so that your partner has somewhere to go with it. So you might revise this statement to say, I don't want to make assumptions, but I just love you so much. And I'm feeling frustrated and hurt because I'm worried that you might be losing interest in me. I'm also wondering how you're feeling and if together we might be able to sort this out. So you're giving them an opening to be a part of this dialogue rather than throwing kind of like a closed statement at them. Now, John might take the surface structure of communication, right? I feel like you never listen to me, literally, either because he misreads the communication or because he does actually pick up on the frustration she's expressing, but he interprets it as criticism of his competency. And so he responds in a negative or unsupportive manner, okay? So I want to give you a few basic, probably common examples of deep versus surface structure communications. So another surface structure communication in a relationship might be, we never go out. But the deep structure communication would be, I love you and I have fun with you. Let's spend more time together. 
or you always ignore me. But instead, what if you said, I am feeling unappreciated and unimportant and I would just really love a gesture of love from you right now. Another one, this house is always a mess. Usually that could tra be translated to mean, I want to relax, but my environment accuses me of falling down on the job and I feel defeated and I'm worried that you're gonna judge me when I could really just use your support right now. So I wanna give you another poignant example and this, this may be from the open hearts perspective what I call someone who has an anxious attachment. I was talking about my mom because I'm worried about her. She's a functioning alcoholic and tends to be very negative. When I start to share my worries with my husband, he tells me that I'm negative too, that I need to find a therapist or other people with the same problems to talk to. It's like he always has a point to prove against me and he doesn't see that it hurts me. I usually just ignore him and cry at home alone. He doesn't even know how this affects me. So I think it's important to note that this is actually a form of protest behavior being described here, and that is punitive withdrawal. And the goal is typically twofold in this circumstance, and that is self-protection and rescue fantasies. So the surface structure communication might be something like, fine, I don't care, whatever. And then she shuts down and goes and holds herself up in her room. Now there's a nonverbal communication being delivered. No. That's unacceptable. You're supposed to be all these things to me. And if you cannot figure a way, out a way to be those things and make me feel good about myself, then I'm going to go pout and I'm going to punish you by withdrawing my feelings altogether and not give you access to me anymore. That way I stay safely protected and you will need to prove yourself to me by rescuing me from my isolation. Okay, so that's how the Rolling Stone is going to receive that. Now, the deeper structure communication beneath that defensive layering is... I'm scared and I feel all alone and I'm really worried about my mom and I need a sign from you that we are connected. I need to feel like it is safe to be myself around you because I've never had that opportunity and my mom's experiences are making me worry that I won't have that opportunity. And I think that if I could find a way to feel more connected to you, then perhaps I could maintain a positive outlook. It might appear that his surface communication you need to find a therapist or other people who have the same problems to talk to, which is actually fantastic advice, by the way. But if it feels like a deflection, and it might have been, maybe it was delivered in a flippant kind of way, all right, that's still really good information. So rather than respond defensively to the deflection, notice what he is deflecting from and respond to that instead. So this deep structure communication probably sounds something like, whoa, I am overwhelmed by your feelings and your needs because I know that there's really no way for me to fix or solve this problem for you right now. And so that makes me feel helpless and incompetent when you inundate me with them and expect me to be able to just sit with it. And it causes me great discomfort and anxiety, and yet you keep on doing it, which makes me feel like you don't care about my feelings. Plus, it's hard for me to empathize with what you're going through, and I don't really understand it. So I try to protect you from my discomfort by turning off or tuning out because the other options are to yell at you or to say something I don't mean to get you to stop. He tells you to find another source of support and perhaps it comes across as snide or flippant because he's trying to obscure the helplessness he's feeling in that situation, which he probably thinks would make him appear weak and on some level also fears that that would be a turnoff for you. And Let's be honest, for a lot of open hearts, it kind of is, because on some level you are looking to your partner to be this big, strong person that's gonna manage your issues and make you feel better about yourself and fill you up with that loving feeling. And he really cannot be that person. Your partner, whether it's male or female or some other form of gender expression, cannot be that person. Because also, they probably have not been taught how to be a good listener either, and that is, a listener who can be present with their emotions as well as yours and not try to fix or run away from them. Now, if you have an insecure attachment style, it's probably going to be a fight or flight or freeze response. You might feel yourself numb out and dissociate. You might feel yourself need to get the hell out of there. You might feel yourself revving up for some kind of conflict. It's likely that in your past, there were instances in which it was not safe to express yourself that way. And so if that's something you want to learn about, um, if you stick with me uh, for the next segment of this live stream series, I'm going to talk about four rules that I recommend um, following before trying to practice deep structure communications in this way.